Hi guys, I've just got my hair cut. Ooh. Ooh. What do you think? Um, I know it still looks really long, but I've had quite a bit taken off. Like, it was way, way past here, about my waist length. So, I didn't get any layers except for at the front, and I went for a very blocked cut. Um, Donna's just left. I wanted her to come on camera, but she's being camera shy. Feels and looks so much healthier. So yeah, new woman. <laughs> Shelf. You don't need to speak for him. Right. Who is it? Elf on the shelf. And who are you eating chocolate? Yeah. No, I'm eating chocolate ice cream. John, Johnny, yes, I'm yeah. eating chocolate ice cream. No, I'm fat. I eat my whole thing. Yes. No, yeah, there, was, ice cream. there was Hunters that left. I only had one. Yeah. She set it off. I've not. I've you been giving him. Did you have any bowl tonight? I had one bowl. So it must have been. This was my first It bowl. wasn't. I I Yes, yeah. Okay. Angie, go give us a joke. Like, why do bees have sticky hair? I don't know why do bees have sticky hair. Because they use a honeycomb. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everyone. How are you doing? So, in bed with Steph and Terry again. This time today we are talking about money, 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 money. Okay, it's something that Steph doesn't want us to do. Um, not because he's like embarrassed about talking, because a lot of people don't want to, you know, share this stuff. It's because he finds it boring. It's a yawn fest talking about finances and stuff. This is a boy that did accounts at university. Sleepy. <laughs> and he finds it so boring. Um, Sleepy But bundles. I feel it is an important topic and it's something that we really, really struggled with right up to maybe just a, a couple of years ago. Two years ago. Yeah, up until a couple of years, we really did not. We were not. rolling in it, rolling in the deep. Look, this is not a video about how to be a millionaire, right? Because... Because that's next. <laughs> That's next week. We're not millionaires, okay? This time next year, right? Um, this is a, a video about how to manage your money so you're you're not in any debt. Cheers. Cheers, baby. I'm on tea. I'm you're on the... rum. Off rum. to next one, man. What, like, See? what role models are we? No. Um, this he is wants a... to talk about how to do your money. You and <laughs> Elf can do this for two next one. <laughs> This is, a, this is a, a video about how to manage your money so you have balance in your life. You are cash, you're on your way to being cash rich and stress free, which is the most important thing. So um, I'm going to give you, before we get started, a little backstory on how bad we used to be with our money. So way back, way back in the day, 
I used to work all sorts of hours and lots of good money and with two incomes coming in, <coughs> why save for what you want when you can just take higher finance? So we would take finance out and everything and we would have credit cards, store cards, we had a lot of debt and the thing about having a lot of debt <coughs> makes you cash poor, okay? And having lots of nice things and, you know, 450 pound coat jackets which and 200 pound dresses, which I had, um, that only fills you with happiness for a short space of time. Um, and then you're left paying it off with interest on the top of it. So it's not really a 450 pound jacket or 200 pound dress, it's a lot more, it works out. But my mentality was, Oh, who wants to save up for three years, five years for that car or, or whatever when we can get it the now? Yeah, it's going to cost us a little bit more, but I get it right now. So, yeah, that was my mentality and I was cash poor, okay? So, it might have looked to the outside world like I was, you know, doing all right, driving a big car, you know, wearing designer threads, but I was cash poor, Okay, so all those people that you see who have the big houses, the the fancy cars, um, you know, always buying new clothes, always going out, and they earn about the same amount of money as you, and you look at them and you think, oh, they've got it sorted, they're so good with their money, like, I, I, I'm never able to afford that, afford what they do. Listen, the Probably the, the likelihood is they're living beyond their means, okay? That morg that big house, they're probably going to be mortgaged up to their eyeballs. They'll be paying that off right up until they retire, okay? That 20, 30,000 pound car, they, they didn't pay that in cash. That'll be, on, that'll be a lease or it'll be in finance. That's debt, okay? More debt on top of the mortgage that they've got. And going out all the time and buying clothes all the time means they're probably not saving anything right making them cash poor okay so you need to get your head around that don't be looking at trying to keep up with the joneses okay or the kardashians as it is these days okay you've got to live within your means so that was we were like in three phases of how bad our our, our spending was okay so that was phase one phase two was when we had all this debt and Steph says, I hate my job, I want to go to college. And I've always wanted them to go to college. And I've got friends who bit the bullet, who had families, and, and as an adult, went back to school, bit the bullet of, you know, being a student with a young family, and then they got their degree, and it all worked out for them, and they, they got a brilliant job that they would never have been able to get if they never went back to school. Um, so I was like, okay, it's a few years of hardship, but then, you know, you'll, you'll probably be able to be in your dream job and, uh, and we'll, we'll live like kings and queens at the end of it. So the only trouble is, if you quit in your job, we have more outgoings than we have incomings then. And I just went, oh, I'm talking myself out of it. You're also getting really old. So if you don't do it now, <laughs> You're getting really old, you know, you're nearly 30. It's like, if you don't do it now, you know, the, the older you get, the more doors will close on you. You just you just need to do it, it's do or die. So, you know, I'll figure it out. You're probably gonna need to get a part-time job. And he was like, I'm fine with that. So he did, a bit of story time, he did all sorts of part-time jobs, delivering pizza, working in a biscuit factory, parcel force, and then he got an amazing, amazing part-time job, which earned him more money than I earned doing my full-time job. An amazing job, okay, it was a stock controller. And I thought, this is excellent, all the stars are in alignment. You've got this job, you're earning more money than me, and you're able to go to uni and do your degree at the same time, fantastic. Well, after a few months, the, the company he worked for turned around and said to him, look, you're doing an amazing job. You have saved the company. 
X amount of thousands of pounds, but the way we see it is, this is a full-time job. We're thinking about how much, um, if someone was doing this full-time, how much they could be saving the company. And they said they offered them it as a full-time, they said the, the job is no longer part-time, it's a full-time position, it's yours if you want it. So he straight away wanted to take it. Um, and I was like, oh no, 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 don't give up your degree. You, do, you know, when you're a chartered accountant, you'll earn more than more than that job, you know? Um, and he was like, I don't even know if I'm going to get my degree. And I was like, of course you're going to get a degree. You're smart, you'll get your degree. So we had a big argument over it and ultimately I won. <laughs> and he didn't take the job and he was left unemployed and we were back to square one and things got out of hand. So I had to end up phoning my mum and dad, help, really embarrassing, but they came in, they cleared all my credit cards and my debt, um, because if they hadn't, the way things were going is we would have ended up bankrupt. He really struggled, he could not get a part-time job um, after, after that job. It was actually easier for him to get full-time work than part-time work, which I, I didn't think, it, I thought it would have been the other way about. So, and then to, to make matters worse, in the end, he ended up not getting his degree, which is, is a, I'll just tell you what happened, right? He, I know, I know, I can't, I know, right, it's, it's like, it doesn't seem like we're... You have even started with these No, slides. I know, I know, I'm just going to talk Got about it. Know. I'm just going because I don't want you to think that you, oh, you just failed, because you no, didn't just failed. No, I just couldn't do it, that was it, that's no, it. You no, no, you could do was, it. No, you could do it, you could do it. I just, the reason oh. why I'm just going to point this out, because I don't want people to think that he just couldn't, he, he wasn't capable of getting his degree, that's not the case. <sighs> The jump from college to uni was a big jump for him, okay? So he went straight into second year at uni and he went from a classroom environment to an auditorium with 300 people and two hour lectures. And it was it was a struggle. You actually said it was a struggle to not fall asleep during these lectures, they were so boring. Um, and he failed all his exams apart from two exams. So, we had some personal things going on and I was able to appeal for him to do reset um, his second year again. And this time he went in and he passed all his exams but one exam, which happened to be a <coughs> unit that he passed the year before. And when, you, when you're at university, you're allowed to carry over two units on it the following year. So I was like, yeah, you passed, you're on to your third year, final year. Um, but because it was a reset, they said to him, um, no, you've got to pass every unit. You're not, uh, when you reset in a year, you're not allowed to um, carry over any units. So that was it. He didn't get in. We, we appealed against it and I thought, well, the they'll obviously see that he passed it last year, so it's not like he, if he's passed it once, he can pass it again. Um, but no, they didn't, they, they didn't let him in. So that was that, the, the, the dream of you being an accountant was over. He did walk away with um, his HNC from college, which makes him a qualified bookkeeper. Mm -hmm. um, but trying to, even though he was a qualified bookkeeper. It turns out to get a job in the financial sector, you can't have bad credit. And guess what? <laughs> we had bad credit. So um, it was impossible for him to use his HNC and to get a job. So we ended up, he had to go back <coughs> to what he was working as before he even started um, going to university or college. Humphrey stuff which was a forklift driver oh. um, and that's what he does today because we needed him to get a job. I My wages could pay for everything, pay for all our bills, our mortgage, food on the table, petrol, our car payments, but any extras like Christmas, birthdays, there wasn't any extras, right? To say we were paycheck to paycheck is an understatement. 
we were literally on the bread line. So um, we we had to just bite the bullet and go back to doing what you what you did. Do best. Fort lifting and Me only about four know, days a week. For me and money. Well, yeah. Um, he's I said we're doing all these videos on a Friday. <laughs> so okay, so his job then now um, has gotten working longer hours but four days a week, so he gets three days on. Three days off. Four days on, three days off. So you think, okay, we've learnt our lesson. Let's not get ourselves into debt. We have two um, wages coming in. You know, let's get savvy about um, our income. So I thought, you know, pay all our bills, whatever's left over, that's what we've got, we can blow, okay? And basically I had my income come in and then whatever I had left after I paid everything off, I just blew it. And guess what? I found myself in trouble because that you can't, you, that's, that's not how... Trouble ahead. That's not how it works, um, managing your finances. So, for instance, I want to do the house up and I'd be like, all right, I've got all this spare cash. We'll go to Ikea and we'll buy some furniture. Go to Ikea, buy some furniture. The following week, I would have some car problems and I would need to take it in to um, get fixed. But I had no spare cash because I just spent all my money on Ikea. Right? I was not managing my money, right? No. Okay, that's... Um, and so what would happen... When, when that would happen, I'd end up phoning my mum saying my car's broke down and I need help, can you, can you, can you lend me some money? So I was on this merry-go-round and I was like, how can I not figure out how to manage my money? It doesn't matter how what much I- What are you I, doing wrong? It doesn't matter if, when I've got, like how, if two wages coming in or one wage is coming in, I'm still crap when it comes to money. <laughs> Both of us were. Yep. So, um, and sister. Here's here's the thing. The people that I seen who were cash rich, comfortable, what I would call it middle class, they all owned their property outright, okay? And they all kind of invested their money and they all had very little small outgoings, okay? So I but a lot of those people, like I work with people who have multiple six figures in their bank accounts and but when I say they, their outgoings are small, I mean, they really don't spend any money on themselves. And, I, I, and for me, you don't want to be the richest corpse in the graveyard. You need to be able to buy clothes and go on holiday. You know, you want to enjoy your money. I just needed balance, okay? But at the same time, my ultimate goal is I would like to pay my mortgage off within 10 years, have um, cash where I would be able to, if my kids come to me and need help getting on the property ladder, I could help them out, give them a money for a deposit. If, if my, well, my girls turn around and tell me they're getting married, I can throw them a wedding. That's, the, that's my dream, that's my aim, my goals, is to get to that position. Um, because that's the position that my parents are in and Stephen's parents are in and that's what we want for ourselves. Now that we had more income coming in, we could afford to get a bigger place. But instead of um, selling our house and getting a, um, you know, one big giant dream house, what we wanted to do was a buy to let, okay? Because a lot of the people that I know that you know, are doing quite well for themselves. They they have properties, they have flats and stuff that they rent out. And for them, it's an investment for when when they retire, that's retirement money, it's extra money when they retire. And I thought it was really smart. Um, now I could do that with the flat that we're renting out. Don't get me wrong, doing a buy to let mortgage is a bit more complicated and a lot more stressful to go through. I swore after the, the one, when we done it, I was like, I'm never buying a house again. That was so stressful. Because they go through your finances with a fine tooth comb. You have to prove that you can keep both- I'm not buying a house. <laughs> you can keep both mortgages going, okay? Mm -hmm. um, but 
it's worth it because it's putting us Such on the path. Number. It's putting us on the path to achieving the goals that I want to be cash rich, mortgage free. I could sell that flat in eight or ten years time and the profit I make of that would pay off the mortgage on this, this property. Or I can um, keep it and um, you know leave it for when I retire. But if I paid off this mortgage sooner with it, that means the money that I'd be spending on this mortgage, I can use for investments and savings, um, making me cash rich. Money, okay. money, money. Money, 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 money. Okay, so now, how do I get balance? How do I balance out my wages? Feng shui, yin and yang. Balance out my wages every month. Right, first of all, I don't know how you couples do your money, if you have separate accounts or whatever, but we're kind of old fashioned, and whereas we just put all our money in the one pot and, and, and you know, then divide it up, okay? Um, what's his is mine, what mine's is his, okay? I, I don't get it, I don't, I don't get these people who, you know, have separate bank accounts. I don't get it, right? I see couples <clears throat> borrowing money off of each other, I think it's bizarre, okay? I have, I see couples who have separate money and one of them is working part-time and raising the kids and the other one's working full-time. Like, how, how does that work? And the person working part-time still has to chip in for all the, half the bills. I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. Um, to me, it's, you, you're married, everything goes in the one pot, and then you split it. So first thing, you need to know is housing, you spend 35%, okay? That is everything, the house insurance, the council tax, okay? What you bring in, if it comes over, if your house, if your mortgage and your insurance and your council tax and everything for your house, comes more than 35%, you are living beyond your means. You have got a mortgage, in my opinion, that you shouldn't have, that is too, too expensive for you. If it comes under that, then you are quids in. Guess what? You could probably pay off your mortgage sooner. And by only, by most people, if they increase their mortgage payments with 50 pound to 100 pound a month, you can take like five years off your mortgage which is what I would recommend you do. Or you could do put that extra money aside to um, home improvements, maybe a, a, a loft conversion or a conservatory or whatever. But make sure whatever you're spending in your house, 35% of your income, you don't want to go over that. Okay. Remember I was telling you that I would be like, oh, I've got all this spare cash and then I would spend it and then something would crop up and I'd be like, oh, I've spent all my spare cash. Yeah, you need to have a sinking fund, okay? It's really important. Having a mortgage is the biggest purchase you'll ever make and near enough, there's every, every month or so, there'll be something that will go wrong. Since we've moved into this house, we've had doors fall off cookers, we've had new cooker we had to buy, yeah, Plum, plumber, electric, um, our electric box Oops, went on fire, right. um, we've got, I, said, I said the plumber, we've got, at the moment, we've got a light fitting needs fixed and a plug that needs fixed, there's always repairs and that is when you go to your sinking fund, <coughs> so when that, there's a job that needs done in the house, rather than putting it aside and living in the house that Jack built, you go to your sinking fund and you're able to repair it and get it done. No more than 5% you should be putting aside for that, okay? I would also, like if there's sponsor sheets come in in your work, it comes out your sinking fund. Your daughter comes in, it's a non-uniform um, day at work, school, comes out your sinking fund. And I would even put the kids clubs, after school clubs, come out your sinking fund. And as a dance teacher, and you know, as 
kind of good for me that parents invest in kids, you know, arts, right? It's at it's a, my benefit. It's just notification, sorry on my phone. Okay. It's, um, it's to my benefit that parents do that, but as someone who used to compete, I know how expensive it is. It used to be flights to America, Paris, Ireland, accommodation, private lessons. Um, it wraps up to, you know, tens of thousands a year. And then costumes, these costumes would be, what are you doing? Nothing. What was that, your Titan? None. No, what was it, your Titan? I was okay, carry on. No, what were you typing? I was just replying to you, you did, sorry. So I know, I'm trying to have a serious conversation. Costumes, okay. costumes would be like, they would cost more than people's wedding dresses, okay? And the, the sort of dancing I did, I had to have to get six of them, okay? And I would see parents um, saying that there would be, you know, their daughter's moving up and they can't have a second-hand costume now because they're moving up in level. So, you know, they were taking out loans to buy their daughter's um, new costumes. Don't get yourself into debt because of your, your kid's hobby, okay? Um, take it out your sinking fund. If it's £10 a week for their, their, their class, their karate, their football, or whatever it is that they do, take it out their sinking fund. If it comes to more than that, and you've still got repairs in your house that you can't get, you can't afford it, okay? It's, it's, that's the hard reality, you can't afford it, okay? 5%, no more. All right, utilities. This one, me and Steph still struggle with, okay? 5%. I'm the sort of person, I find it really hard to not have the heating on all the time. And so, and Steph's worse. No, Steph puts no. the, I came, I, I woke up this morning to <laughs> Steph with the heating on. Yeah. And I, I went upstairs and I, and, and I turned it off. The place was roasting. Then Steph went, do you want a bath? And I said, yeah. So he went upstairs, ran me a bath and put the heating on and then came downstairs and opened windows. He's, oh, he's putting the heating back on, I turned off, I like and, then, I like a and then opening the windows, just totally, literally burns money away, okay? If oh, you are spent, if your utilities comes to more than 5%, then you need to start finding ways to cut back, you know, putting the tumble dryer on at off-peak times, dishwasher on at off-peak times, the heating on at off-peak times, you know, start wearing a house coat <laughs> around the house. You need to, for us, our saving grace is that we have solar panels. So every quarter we get money from the grid for having solar panels. That's the only saving grace. Otherwise, this part is like, is, is a, an absolute bust for us. But yeah, 5%, okay? Um, no more, or you'll need to start thinking of ways and how you can cut back on that. Savings. Savings, okay? 5%. Okay, 5% on savings. And what I like to do with my savings is at the end of the year, that can go and go on a holiday. So, you know, sometimes, you know, that dream holiday to New York, if, it's, if it comes to more than 5% of your income, you can't afford to go to New York for your holidays. You know, 5% of your income might be more realistic. You're going um, all inclusive to Benidorm for, for a week. Yes, baby dom. <laughs> baby dom, right? Or it might be, 5% might come into your budget for to New York, who knows? But yeah, that's, that's what, our savings is what we use to go on a family holiday at the end of the year, okay? No more than 5% would I be spending on that. Personal. Personal is 5%. So we pretty much lift 5% of our income every um, month. We put it in a bag. And once that's spent, it's spent. So what do we spend our personal on? Well, I've got a haircut, right? So if I need to get, you know, makeup or um, 
my hair done, it comes out my personal, all right? Drinking in the house, bottles of wine, that doesn't come out my food budget, it comes out my personal, okay? Um, <laughs> nights out. Nights out. Etc, etc. Right, so if, if I've got a lot of nights out, the chances are it's probably going to wrap in more than 5%. So tonight I was asked to go, me and Steph were asked to go out for our friend's birthday, but we were also asked tomorrow to go to a christening. And we'd already said we were going to a christening. So we we are going to the christening, but we can't afford to go out Friday and Saturday night. We just it just wraps in more than our five percent. So um we are going to one of those nights and the uh, the birthday boy, sorry Davey, happy birthday. We've sorry, had to we say, you know, sorry, we've just got too much on, we can't we'll make it up to you the other night. Um but yeah, we've just got to be a lot stricter. Um with you know our spending our personal spending and that's it it's five percent that's all it is debt ten percent you're probably thinking i thought you're supposed to have zero percent steph i don't care just let me finish this sorry i we need to go and get john but he's actually allowed to stay in nursery up to four o'clock he's, he's not staying at four <laughs> right just so rattle. um I'm going to, I'm, so I'm going to finish this anyway. Right, I'm not stopping halfway through and then debt, starting 10%. again. Debt, 10%. <laughs> Here's the thing, having some debt is good. Let me explain. My assistant at, um, <laughs> in my dancing, she's going for a mortgage now. Oh, and goodness. one of the things that she, she was finding a struggle is that um, she, she hadn't accumulated enough credit, like taking on enough debt to, to to be like a good credit, I don't know, like, um, which I felt was mental because both her and her husband-to-be have had finance out in cars, they've both got mobile phones, like how much debt do they want a young person to have before they can say, I mean, clearly they want them to have credit cards and all this sort of bad stuff, right? Um, so you, you do need to have a bit of um, debt for you to get good credit. And as someone that has had bad credit, I really needed to change my, my credit rating. So we both have mobile phones, which works out good for us being YouTubers, okay? We want to have the latest phones. Um, credit cards, mm -hmm. credit cards I have, but I have them work for me so we have a Tesco credit card which we get Tesco points and we like to use the Tesco points to save up for air miles okay and um, we will pay our shopping because we pay we, we 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 pay that every every month we need to get messages so whatever we spend on our shopping we use our credit card to pay it and then pay it off straight away right so um, and then our, our credit goes up because we're paying it off straight away and we don't get any charges on it. We're not paying extra on it because we, we pay it off straight away. We also use it to pay for our um, petrol that we spend every month and we pay it off straight away and we don't get any extra charges on it, but our credit goes up because of it. So um, that is how I would say, say to make credit cards work for you. It gets you, bumps up your credit. That's the best way to use a credit card then. It bumps up your credit um, and gives you better credit and you're paying it off straight away and you're not getting any extra charges on top of it. Um, everybody these days gets out mobile phones and stuff. We, you know, obviously our, our debt is things like we have our internet packages, um, Netflix, Amazon Prime, but we, that's it. And um, we don't really have, we don't have debt debt. We, we're not paying off credit cards, minimum payments or anything mm. like that. Um, we actually are way below this 10%, okay? We're actually way below it. Um, thankfully, <laughs> thankfully. But you, but I mean, if you, if you do want to take out, like, I don't know, get a kitchen out in finance or whatever, that's fine and I'm not talking about a car because car comes on on another 
segment, okay, that's fine, but as long as it doesn't come over the 10%, if it's going over 10% of your income, you can't afford that. Don't take any higher finance or debt out that comes over 10% of your income. So you've got to calculate everything that you're spending, your mobile phones, your internet packages, your TV, and whatever higher finance. And if it comes over 10%, it's too much. Okay. Now I did say don't include buying a car on that because your next segment is travel, which is 15%, okay? So um, we own our two cars outright, so we don't need to pay up um, higher finance on any cars, but if we did, it would need to be 15% come in on our 15 cent, and that includes also the petrol that we have to put in to our cars, how tax. much our tax, our road tax, our MOT, and putting money aside um, for any anything that goes wrong. We like to put about £300 for each car aside um, each year for in case things come back and need new brakes or whatever. Um, for its MOT. Uh -huh, for its MOT, okay. Thankfully, um, well, first MOT get just passed and just breezed through. Yeah, but we had to get hey. we had to get a few repairs done through. Germany, which yeah. you would have seen if you could follow my vlogs. I had to get a few repairs done in the car, so I expected the car to pass the that flying was colours. Car, Caesar tries. Okay. If if you and that includes any bus fares you need to give the kids everything fifteen percent. So like my daughter. Her school is out our catchment area, so she has to get the bus to school. So obviously she needs bus fare. So everything with travel, involved with travel, is 15% of your income. Excuse me. Okay. And um, if you don't drive, you are quids in. Quids in, okay, because driving costs a lot of money. Now you could put that- Too it, much money. You could put that extra money to learning to drive, or you could put it to yeah, the fact. You, you could you could yeah, put the extra that you save mm. on maybe bumping up your your um, savings so you can go on a better holiday. Go to that trip to New York because if you've been dealing with public transport all year, you deserve an upgrade, one hundred percent. Or you could put it towards you're paying off your mortgage or something else that you feel that that extra money, so if you're only spending 5%, you've got an extra 10% in your income every month, um, then you, you know, you can put it wherever you feel it will work best for you, but no more than 15% on travel. Okay. Okay, food. Okay, food is 15% and mm. that is everything that you eat, okay? So if you go out to a restaurant, then that doesn't come under your personal, that comes under food. That comes out of your 15%. If you order some takeaways, that doesn't come out your personal. Love that, a takeaway Friday. That comes out your 15% on food, okay? And see your grocery shopping, see all the nappies and cleaning products, that also comes out your food budget of 15%, okay? So anything you buy in a supermarket, any um, deliveries you order or going out to eat, it's 15%, all right? And if you're spending more than that, because you can easily can, you can know, you can't, you can't afford it. You can't, can't afford, afford it. it. Our final part. Woo! Final one, my favorite one. Clothes, five percent. Okay, five yeah. percent. Now, for me, most of what I buy the kids for their birthdays or Christmas is clothes. Okay, so I usually just put that five percent aside, and um, for the Christmas when it comes to Christmas time or birthday times or whatever, then that's the, the their clothing budget. That's what I would have for me. clothes. Um, if there's extras and things that they, they want, um, we're in a position with, in our jobs, we're able to do it over time to get extras um, on top of that. Um, if you're not got that, um, 
then you're just basically going yeah, to have to well you're just going to have to take it out your, your clothing budget so for instance at christmas angela got a playstation and she got a big french mirror now um that stuff that we would get by doing some overtime and said i got driving lessons okay it wasn't out our clothing budget but if if we weren't able to do uh, have uh, ha be able to do overtime then we would have to have paid for those driving lessons and um playstations out of our clothing budget um so that's that and that's everything that is a hundred percent of your wages balanced Done. out for you okay we always i cannot stress enough like to do a let to buy mortgage i mean we know the person that's that's renting out our mortgage so i don't know if we if, if we would carry on if we didn't know the person no we wouldn't <laughs> um but it it's it, that is definitely put us on the path to um, the righteous path to, to glory to getting us cash rich in the future and next the year gold at the end of the rainbow like we're not doing a lot of overtime the now because our son's at nursery and we want to spend a, as much time with him the now but when he starts school we're looking at next year um any overtime and extra money that we have coming in investing it and sort of things i mean i don't know to, to invest in there's, there's so many options um, you have um, index stocks you have gold i was even looking at whiskey bonds I was talking to my assistant last night. She's started in her investment. She's only 22. She's so clued, screwed on, not, honestly, is handbags. She's starting to do an investment in, in designer handbags. No, listen. You I was, take them out. I was looking at the returns, especially Hermes bags, but then, you know. You Hermes need to... bags, is it not? Hermes? Hermes. Hermes? Hermes? No. Hermes. Hermes? I would say Hermes. Okay, right. I'm your, I'm your you need you need the money you would put down to buy a car to buy one of those bags right. just the right. start just the starting level of one of those bags right, yeah. right? but the returns that oh, you the returns are, are more than you, you would get in gold fact 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 not fiction right. okay i hope this helps catch these guys Bye. did you hear what happened down at the chips chip shop no. Uh, fish was battered and the chips were assaulted. <laughs> <laughs>